Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm Alicia, Communications Director at DEED. And Dee, is that you on the phone right now? We want to make sure we've got you. Yes, it is. Thank you right so now. much, you guys. Good morning. Thanks for joining us right now. You are our sole uh, reporter joining us for the call. So we're going to walk through it the way we normally would and uh, certainly welcome any questions along the way here and at the end. So um, with that, just, you know, please keep your devices muted to uh, mitigate echoes. And if you do have any questions, Dawn's uh, email address is in the chat. So I'm going to turn it over Thank to you. our Deputy Commissioner, Kevin McKinnon. It looks like we have a few more folks joining. Deputy Commissioner, over to you. Great. Thanks, Alicia. And thanks uh, for joining us this morning to discuss our most recent employment data. Uh, Minnesota saw a small decline in jobs and labor force participants from June to July. Specifically, we saw a decline of 1,100 jobs. Minnesota has more than 3 million jobs, so that loss is statistically flat. Our unemployment rate increased to 3.2% over the month, uh, but that unemployment rate continues to be much better than the national average of 4.3%. Overall, our unemployment situation is still in a good place given that Minnesota has gained jobs eight out of the last 12 months. When it comes to labor force participation, our rate remains at 67.8%. The rate was flat over the month, though around 2,000, 2,200 Minnesotans left the labor force. For context, our labor force participation rate uh, percentage continues to compare very favorable to the national rate of 62.6%. Last but not least among our economic indicators are wages and inflation. Wages for Minnesota workers again outpaced inflation by a healthy margin. They grew at 3.9% over the year versus inflation at 2.9%. This is good news for Minnesota workers. Our economy remains in a strong place. Our over the year job growth is, very, is still positive. Our unemployment rate is still low. Wages are outpacing inflation and labor force participation rate is still high. As I mentioned, since we've gained uh, jobs eight out of the last 12 months, we continue to work hard to drive job growth in the months and years ahead. One way we promote economic growth is through business investment in our state. And we've seen companies investing in business expansion projects and job growth all over Minnesota and in all of our major industries. Since the beginning of 23, uh, 165 businesses have announced business expansions in Minnesota that could lead to nearly 12,000 new jobs in the next few years. There are also jobs available to workers who want them. Our most recent data from the Federal Job Openings and Labor Turnover Survey, or JOLTS, shows that there are around 165,000 open positions still in Minnesota. In fact, we continue to hear from businesses that labor availability is a major barrier to hiring. And that's why DEED is heavily investing in job training that serves both workers and the companies looking to hire them. Uh, most of you know we had a historic uh, session in 2023 and a whole suite of workforce development programs were passed during that uh, legislative session and are now being implemented to help bring more Minnesotans into the labor force with high demand skills. In fact, Commissioner Verilak couldn't be here with us today because he's in Duluth talking to hundreds of workforce development leaders about how to support and encourage Minnesotans to enter the workforce. We're working hard to leverage funding to help Minnesota's businesses grow, whether that be through private or federal sources, uh, and to hire more workers. There are many opportunities here and lots of work being done to capitalize on this funding uh, to implement projects and create good jobs. We will continue to keep a close eye on all of these indicators, especially as the Federal Reserve consider, considers whether to cut rates, interest rates, as it continues its efforts to achieve the so-called soft landing of reducing inflation without sharp, without a sharp slowdown in, out, in output. So with that, I'm going to hand things off to our Labor, for, labor Market Information Director, Angelina Wynn, for a deeper dive on the details. Angelina. Thank you, Deputy Commissioner. Hello, everyone. Um, as usual, I'm going to go over job details by super sector, um, and I'll describe um, as soon as the slides come back, um, you'll see um, 
the same descriptions that I'm giving uh, now. So over the month employment change, uh, three super sectors in Minnesota gained jobs on a seasonally adjusted basis over the month. And I'm going to list them in the order of number of jobs gained. So education and health services led with 4,300 jobs gained, up 0.7%. Other services gained uh, 1,100 jobs, up 1%, and professional and business services gained 600 jobs, up 0.2%. Two super sectors did not change over the month, and they are manufacturing and mining and logging, so they did not gain or lose jobs over the month. And six super sectors lost jobs over the month. And again, I'll mention them in the order of number of jobs uh, lost. So trade, transportation, and utilities saw the um, biggest loss of 2,400 jobs, down 0.5%. Leisure and hospitality lost 2,000 jobs, down 0.7%. Financial activities lost 1,100 jobs, down 0.6%. Construction lost 900 jobs, down 0.7%. Government lost 500 jobs, down 0.1%, and information lost 200 jobs, down 0.5%. So overall, the gains were a tiny bit smaller than the losses. Um, so our net uh, job change over the month is that we lost 1,100 jobs on a seasonally adjusted basis. And since there are more than 3,036,000 jobs in Minnesota, that change um, translates to 0% change. Um, Minnesota's private sector lost 600 jobs, also 0% change. The prior month's report for June, uh, seasonally adjusted job growth was revised down by 4,300 jobs. So the final estimate is we lost 7,500 jobs between May and June, rather than the originally um, reported 3,200 jobs. And then next, looking at our labor force. Our labor force size decreased by about 2,200 people over the month. So totaling um, 3 million and uh, about 95,000 people for July. Uh, the number of employed decreased by about uh, 8,500 workers and the number of unemployed increased by a little more than 6,200 people. Our labor force in total is about 37,000 workers uh, smaller than it was before the pandemic in uh, February 2020. Labor force participation rate remains at 67.8%. And, you know, coming out of the pandemic uh, for years, it has hovered around 68% um, and is holding steady there. And next, we're going to look at over the year employment change. Um, so, Good news is over the year, Minnesota gained more than 29,000 payroll jobs, um, which is a 1% growth rate. Uh, by comparison, the U.S. over the year growth rate is 1.6%. Uh, Minnesota's private sector gained more than 9,500 jobs over the year, up 0.4%. Uh, the U.S. private sector grew 1.4% by comparison. And breaking it down by super sector, so four super sectors uh, gained jobs over the year in Minnesota and seven lost jobs over the year. I'm going to start with the gainers. Um, the biggest gainer was education and health services, gained almost 39,000 jobs, up 7% from Minnesota, um, outpacing the national rates of 3.9%, and growth was strong in all subsectors under uh, education and health services. The second grower was government. Uh, government gained almost 20,000 jobs, up 4.9%, um, again, outpacing the U.S. growth rate of 2.4%. And again, uh, growth was healthy in all subsectors. Leisure and hospitality gained more than 2,600 jobs, up 0.9%. Um, this super sector was a uh, a big grower coming out of the pandemic, and it's still growing, um, but its lower growth is due to a decline in arts, entertainment, and recreation and accommodation subsectors. Um, and then for comparison, the U.S., um, uh, this super sector grew 1.5%. And then lastly, other services gained almost 2,500 jobs, up 2.1%. In, uh, by comparison, the U.S. grew 1.4% for this uh, super sector. So the seven super sectors that lost jobs over the year in Minnesota, um, the biggest um, loss was in professional and business services. They lost about 16,500 jobs, down 4.2%, while the U.S. grew 0.6%. 
and the declines were in management of companies and enterprises, employment services, and services to buildings and dwellings. Manufacturing um, lost more than about 6,100 jobs, um, down 1.8%, and all subsectors experienced decline in Minnesota except for food manufacturing, which grew about uh, 3%. And for comparison, the U.S. manufacturing super sector grew 0.1% over the year. Uh, financial activities um, lost more than 5,000 jobs over the year, down 2.6%, while the U.S. grew 0.2%, and losses were consistent in all subsectors under financial activities. Construction is next on the list, um, losing about 24,000 jobs over the year, down 1.6%. And all subsectors experienced loss in Minnesota except for building e equipment contractors. Um, for comparison, the U.S. construction super sector grew 3%. Trade, transportation, and utilities lost more than 2,200 jobs, down 0.4% in Minnesota. Um, retail trade declined a tiny bit. Uh, wholesale trade declined 1.6%, uh, uh, while transportation, warehousing, and utilities subsector grew 0.4%. And nationally, this super sector grew 0.8%. And then information is next on the list. Um, information lost about 2,200 jobs over the year, down 4.8%. And Minnesota uh, saw a decline in all subsectors under information. Um, the U.S. also experienced decline, but on a, a, at a smaller rate of 0.8%. And lastly, mining and logging lost 53 jobs in Minnesota, down 0.8%. And the U.S. also saw a decline in the super sector, down 1.8%. Um, looking at wages and comparing it to inflation, um, we are still seeing strong wage growth. So average hourly wages for all private sector workers in Minnesota increased 14 cents to $37.51 in July over the month. And over the year, um, wages increased $1.42, which is a 3.9% growth rate. Nationally, um, over the month, wages decreased six cents and grew 4.6% uh, over the year. Comparing that to the CPI inflation index for um, all urban consumers, um, inflation was 2.9 uh, in July. So again, wage growth for Minnesota and the U.S. Um, was higher than inflation. And that has been the case for, um, for at least a year now. And Deputy Commissioner, back to you. Thank you, Angelina. And I think uh, we would uh, take your questions with that. Great. Um, I think, can you guys still hear me? We can. Yes. Thank you, Dean. Okay, great. <laughs> hey, thanks. Um, I wonder if you all could give me a little more color on what's going on with leisure and hospitality. Um, it looks like, and hold on. Uh, I can't look at your slides and the other thing at the same time. One second. Yeah, I'm wondering about two things, trade and transportation and utility that had the largest uh, number of losses for the month. And the second one was leisure and hospitality. I'm really um, interested in any details you all were able to, d to glean from uh, your surveys this month. Yeah, so I'll start with uh, trade, transportation, and utilities um, uh, over the month. Uh, so the the loss was in wholesale trade, um, and we saw consistent uh, subsector declines under wholesale trade. Retail trade actually stayed the same over the month. Um, no. And there were some like zero percent change, um, like you know, grocery stores, general merchandise, department stores, um, gasolines. Uh, they actually grew a little bit, so um, under one percent. But there, there was some growth. Um, and then the subsector transportation, warehousing, and utilities um, also saw a decline of uh, two percent, uh, and losses were consistent under the uh, subsectors. Up across all subsectors there. So overall, retail trade um, stay the same, no change. Wholesale trade decline and transportation, warehousing, and utilities decline. So that's why the whole super sector of trade, transportation, utilities um, saw a decline over the month. Okay, and then, great. 
and then leisure and hospitality. Um, it's still growing like this, you know, because of the disruption of the pandemic, um, this super sector took the biggest hits. And so it was um, in strong recovery mode for for many years and it is still growing um, over the month and over the year. It's just a slower pace of growth. So arts, entertainment and recreation over the month uh, grew 3.6 percent. Um, but accommodation and food services um, declined by 0.7%. And most of that decline was in like restaurants, uh, food services, drinking places, uh, full service restaurants, limited service restaurants, um, but accommodation like hotels and, and such, um, we saw growth over the month. Okay, that's incredibly helpful. Alrighty. Um, good. And then uh, bear with me, let's see the. Oh, OK, uh, it, did I hear you right that there was a revision uh, between the May and June numbers that we previously reported? I think that there was a loss of 3,200 jobs, but the revision for that May to June period is now 7,500 jobs. Did I did I get that right? Yes, you got that right. So we um, okay. every every month when so we, we lost more report, jobs than we thought. Yeah. OK. Yes. Yes. Correct. OK, what what is behind that? That that's a pretty big revision. Yes, let me um, D. Can I uh, get back to you on that? I will have to pull up my files here. OK, that'll be great. Yeah, and I think everybody's got my email and all that. So whatever is easier to, to get back to me. Yeah, that would be great um, because I thought that May had a revision. Uh, I'd have to go back to Emma Nelson's report from two months ago, but I thought there was a revision uh, down. So now it looks like it's reversing the revision from before. <laughs> so if I've got that, any color would be really helpful on that, guys. It, it really would. OK. Um, let's see. And then one moment. Let me just switch gears here. Yeah, um, as far as education and health, uh, that's the sector that gained uh, 4,300 jobs for the month. Um, do we have any color for what's behind that? And I think you reiterated that a little bit during the prepared remarks, but maybe you could uh, just reiterate some of that. Yeah, so the strongest growth um, over the month was in the subsector called healthcare and social assistance. Um, so that grew 1.2%. Uh, and that matters a lot because this is a huge subsector. Um, it makes up for 17.5% uh, of all jobs um, in Minnesota. So growth and strong growth in this uh, subsector means uh, st strong growth for, for the uh, super sector. Um, we saw a decline for the subsector educational services. Um, so that was down 5.1%, uh, but growth in uh, healthcare and social assistance made up for, for all of that loss. So overall, the, uh, the gain in education and health services was driven by healthcare and social assistance. Okay, whoops. And uh, just a quick thing. So let me think for a second. Um, social assistance under healthcare. Uh, do we have any details on what uh, that is? I'm assuming is that you know welfare? Is that uh, what exactly is? How how do you categorize social assistance? Healthcare, obviously, we get that. Education yeah. services get that. That, that's a great question. Um, we don't have more nuanced details at the state level. Um, OK, so so there, it would cover like nursing and residential care facilities, nursing care facilities, social assistance. And let me. It would also cover things like individual and family services or child daycare services or uh, vocational oh, okay. rehab services. But we don't have numbers for each of those. Um, uh, 
No, what you just gave me is great. That that's kind of a nice breakdown. Then that's that's kind of stuff that uh, our readers will get. They can envision, they can visualize a nursing home and a daycare center and nursing facilities and that sort of stuff. So really good. Okay, uh, am I correct then? Uh, and maybe this is a, a question for either you, Angelina, or the deputy commissioner. Um, it sounds like even though this is a continuation of job losses for yet another month, because the numbers are not significant, they're not uh, uh, huge, you will are, it would be fair to say, not overly worried that this is um, sort of a death knell in, we had so many months of growth for jobs, and this is just a continuation in the other direction. Uh, am I categorizing this correctly, that you are not worried? I think that's right. The, you know, over the course of the year, uh, obviously we've had job growth eight out of 12 months. Uh, and uh, as you obviously indicated um, earlier, um, next month we'll come back. Uh, there could be other revisions that are made. Uh, so the important part here, I think, is that we continue to monitor it. We continue to look at a number of factors, not only this data, but as I mentioned, you know, some of the business expansion data, um, we continue to look at uh, open positions and and our workforce system is uh, working with people and employers to to still fill jobs. So so we're looking at a lot of sort of data here, um, but certainly uh, we're keeping a, a keen watch on this and uh, we'll be back next month with more data. Good, good, good. OK. Excellent. Uh, and let me just quickly go through. I think this is, oh, could you give me an update with specifically construction? Um, that one has been, uh, and I, I don't have the slide in front of me immediately, and I know you guys are going to post this, so I'll be able to jump on that soon. But can you, any, any color on the construction uh, numbers, could you review those? for me maybe yeah so construction over the month we saw job gains um and the gains were were consistent in uh, all the subsectors uh construction over the year we saw job loss um and the uh, the job loss in all subsectors except for building equipment contractors um and the largest uh percentage decline was in residential building construction. Really? OK. And is that pretty much, do you think, driven by the high interest rates? But could be, it could be higher, higher labor force, higher uh, cost of supplies, higher interest rate, and, and therefore less demand. Could be a number of factors. Got it. OK. All right, great. Uh, anything I didn't ask that you guys think is important or particularly notable for this, um, and especially with the soft landing, it sounds like um, this might be more evidence of a little bit of cooling. Uh, if there's anything there you want to, you know, say about that with what this maybe portends for uh, those arguing that a slowdown in jobs is maybe greater fuel for the feds to consider uh, decreasing interest rates. Yeah, oh. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll answer this, Dee. Um, so cooling off is the, the, the word I would uh, use as well to describe what we're seeing here. Um, and, but overall, it is not, our economy is still good. Like unemployment rate of 3.2% is still a very low unemployment rate. Um, and because of the turbo growth that we've seen coming out of the pandemic, um, it's natural that at some point it has to uh, slow down or um, level off. And um, I think that's, what's, that's what we're seeing here. Very good. Okay. All right. Good. Well, thanks, guys. Um, any anything else that I didn't ask that you want to make a note of, or uh, yeah, anything else? I think that's good, Dee. 
Okay, great. Well, thanks uh, for for jumping in as the commissioner is uh, up in Duluth. <laughs> Hopefully he's got drier weather than we do <laughs> and uh, appreciate it. Um, uh, sorry, I think, am I still the only one on the call? No, there's a couple of others that have joined, but uh, we appreciate uh, those of you that uh, did participate. Um, uh, and just to recap, uh, we lost 1,100 jobs this month. Our labor force fell by about 2,200, uh, but our economy remains in a state in a strong place. Our unemployment rate is low. Our labor force participation rate uh, is much higher than most states. Um, businesses are expanding. We're attracting federal investments. Uh, and we continue to watch interest rate decisions from the Federal Reserve that could help the economy grow even more. So uh, I hope you can all join us uh, when we next release employment numbers, which will be on September 19th. Uh, so again, thank you very much for participating uh, and have a great rest of